Calling all second years, D2s or rising two year D2s. Are you ready for your second year of dental school? Do you have all the answers? How are you gonna survive this second year of dental school? Stay tuned. Hey, this is Dr. Darwin, a new dentist coach with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin. Actually, this episode is about surviving dental school, surviving dental school, the DT, D2 year at Tufts University. Today, we're going to be, going to be joined with uh, my, my fellas, my guys up in Boston, uh, future DDS, and they have just completed their second year, second year of dental school. And uh, we're going to be talking a little, a little bit about them, about how uh, some tips and some strategies on how to survive uh, the second year of dental school. So what's going on, guys? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, we, we just got through, you know, to the finish line a little bit now. So, you know, just recouping right now, trying to get into summer a little bit. How about you? How, how's everything when you're on? Everything's good, man. Everything's good. I'm just... Glad to see you guys at this halfway mark, this, cru- this crucial and critical uh, halfway mark, you know? Long time coming. It's kind of surreal. It's yeah, surreal. man. Yeah, man. For those of you that are, that are listening and joining us for the first time, uh, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Darwin Speaks, um, as we'll be, we'll be posting videos on a weekly basis. So I don't want you to miss those videos. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button down here below and hit those uh Hit, the, hit that bell notification so you're notified when those videos are being released. So also for those of you that don't know, I want you uh, guys to introduce yourself. Future DDS, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, well, uh, my name is Tyler Brown. My name is Terrell Friday. And we are uh, Future uh, DDS. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> where are you, now, now where are you guys from? Oh, so I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. A town in, in ba- Baltimore, Baltimore, <laughs> Baltimore, Baltimore. That's my old stomping grounds. Yeah. So, so this, <laughs> so this, uh, this series that I do on surviving dental school is is meant to kind of help uh, uh, upcoming dental students, whether they are in first year and they're going to second year, second year going to third year, third year going to fourth year, uh, kind of have some insight as to what your current year that you just finished is like. So wanted to talk to you guys because you guys are basically at the second largest dental school in the country and uh and you guys just completed probably the most challenging year of dental school so um i wanted to kind of ask you a couple questions first question is this question number one so when you guys were finishing your your d1 year what did you hear about the upcoming second year of dental school What, what did you hear from other people Oh, man. Uh, we heard a lot. Uh, we heard a lot. I think that uh, across, I think it's like the general consensus that the D2 year is the hardest year. Um, yeah, I, I know a lot of our friends told us, you know, just get ready, buckle down, because it's going to be a lot. This was kind of our, our main exposure to a lot of the clinical classes, as well as keeping up with the didactic classes. So um, it was a lot at once. Yeah. Um, and everybody told us that it would be that. Definitely. Right. Everybody in perspective like first year take first year put it on steroids and then add, add again really good with your hand skills so that's kind of what it would have turned into <laughs> so 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 the second question is did you guys do anything with with you guys receiving that information did you guys do anything special to kind of get prepared what what how, how did you take all that information and how did you kind of digest it I think I think anybody, <laughs> honestly, I think that whenever, even people who just started their first year, you know, people will tell you how dental school is, and you think that you're able to prepare, but realistically, you know, it's, you're not really doing anything until you're actually in the moment, you know, and I think that um, because, of course, we got through our first year, we kind of knew the, the tempo or the speed that dental school could be, okay. um, and so that helped us more than anything, and so I think, I know, me personally, just really just tried to make sure I stayed organized because I knew that the the storm was coming and I definitely didn't want to, you know, get behind on my studies, you know, as well as everything else that we do with future DDS and all of our other extracurricular activities. Um, So I just, I personally just wanted to make sure that I stayed on top of everything because, you know, it's, it's really, really hard 
to, to start down here and, and move up, it's much easier for you to start up here and kind of glide down a little bit. So yeah. I kind of went in with yeah. that mentality and made sure that they organized from the beginning. Yeah, without a doubt. I can uh, definitely agree with that. Um, with a lot of what Tyler said, I say one big thing was just um, really going into it with a game plan, like to having a game plan going into it, whether it's like by the end of the first year, you kind of know if you need to spend more time with your hands or to spend more time in the, in the library, studying for classes and whatnot. So, you know, going on a game plan, you know, will work for you. And uh, honestly, man, get your rest and, and start getting into a routine while you have time to like really get comfortable with the routine, yeah. you know, because at, at some point, like you're either going to like come with your routine or, or your routine is going to be forced upon you. So, so it's one of the two. Yeah. So it sounds like I heard two things, have a plan, have some kind of routine as you transitioning to the second year. Uh, and then also do a self-assessment kind of like know where you are um, based on uh, your D one year that you just completed and kind of self-assess uh, as you kind of prepare for the second year. All right. So third question, third question. Um, what did you guys like best? If there's ever a thing that to like best about us, about the second year, what did you guys like best about the second year? Uh, I say the thing I like most about second year was, uh, you know, really developing the dental skills, so to speak. So really being in the dental specific courses, uh, learning more about the specialties as well as, you know, granted is, is one of, probably one of the hardest parts of dental school, but you actually really feel like you're in dental school because you're spending so much time in the lab, really learning new procedures all the time. Like literally every week you're, you might have a new project, you know, you're learning something that you might've heard about, things that like you've, you've heard other class and talking about, things you might've gotten done yourself and you don't necessarily exactly know the ins and outs of it. So it just, you kind of start putting it more into, uh, into like case, use cases and actual real life examples. So I like that. I think that um, for me, I think the best thing about second year was that I wasn't completely lost. You know, when I, when I first came into dental school, yeah. I didn't know what was going on, you know, and I, I can, you know, I can definitely say that that lasted, yeah. that feeling lasted me pretty much the entire first year. Um, but now, you know, once second year started, um, I was more familiar with the faculty. I was more familiar with, you know, like I said earlier, the speed of dental school. And that really enabled me to relax a little bit. You know, I wasn't as on my toes if I didn't, you know, if I didn't know what was going or if I didn't do as well as I want to on the test, I knew that, okay, I can go back, reassess how I studied the first time. Do I need to do a second test? Little things like that really, really make a huge difference in your, in your mental space you know, going through dental school, which was huge. And so I can you know, honestly say that second year I was a lot happier and a lot more clear with everything that I was doing because I felt like I had been here before. Right. So you didn't feel lost. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's key. Yeah. So just like there's good things or things that you like the most, uh, there's also challenges about the second year. So uh, can you guys share with us a little bit about, you know, the, some of your biggest challenges – during the second year and how you guys kind of transitioned or worked through those challenges? Um, so second year, we had a lot less time to do everything else besides dental school. And so when I say that, I mean, we started classes at 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, or we had class until four. Then of course, you know, you take a little dinner slash lunch break, whatever it may be. But then you have to be right back in pre clean because we had so many projects due. Um, so we sometimes want to get out of pre clean until 9 p.m. But then, you know, you have everything else you have to take care of. You know, you have, your, you have to call your mom. You have to, you have to go to the gym. You have to call your girl. You have to work on everything else. Um, so that was definitely, definitely the hardest part. But, you know, of course, you know, we always try to turn everything into a positive. You know, we figure that if we can learn how to manage our time in this second year when everything is just – so compact and we don't have that much time at all to really do what we want to do, but we still can make time. If we can do that now, imagine what it's going to be like third year. Imagine what it's going to be like fourth year when we have more time open up. Um, you know, we can just become much more efficient in everything else that we do. Um, so it's really just a learning experience, but I would say definitely lack of time. Yeah. So, so, so you said manage time. So how, how did you manage time? Like, what did you do? What did you guys do? I count. I calendar, I would wake up super early in the morning and I have like a morning routine that I'll go through every single morning, which was key. And I think the most important part 
of that morning routine was actually reviewing my day that I had scheduled the night before. Mm. You know, it's all about planning. It is yeah. all about planning. And if, you know, if you don't plan, especially with the dental school, oh, you will yeah. just get lost. You get lost in the lost. sauce. So I would turn on my alert, uh, my notifications on on uh, vibrate 15 minutes before each event on my calendar. So when I felt a little buzz, I said, okay, you know what? I know something else is coming up. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Um, and that really helped me stay efficient and on top of everything throughout uh, the second year. Yeah, I can agree with that. Just making sure I write stuff down because it's so many different projects, so many different things you got to do, whether it's like, I mean, honestly, when you first start second year, before you really get into only dental specific classes, you got dental classes, you got science classes, you, you might be studying for boards, like we had to study for boards. Uh, then on top of that, like if you're doing any other project outside of what you want to do, or if you're, you know, living life <laughs> any type of way, like it's very hard to be spontaneous and still be successful without, you know, sacrificing some somewhere. So really just writing everything down so that even if, okay, this, I had to stay in lab an extra two hours now, I wrote it, I wrote something down that I made sure I got done when I got home or like made sure when I woke up the next day, I knocked that out first before I do anything else. Cause I know now that's becoming like getting put off to the back burner. You can't allow that to happen. So. so it sounds like you guys were very, very proactive and being intentional, being intentional with your, with your schedules and creating your schedule, what you have to do in this box or in this, this, this routine and just staying on it. Oh, yeah. We yeah. To. Okay. Any other any other challenges besides not having uh uh having less time for every, a whole bunch of non dental things? Any other big challenges that kind of maybe was a little bit different than what you anticipated for second year? Let's see, big things. Um really uh I mean, okay, so one thing I say is like the pace of the projects. Hand skill wise, like I say, my I got a lot better with hand skills, or more comfortable doing a lot of different things with with hand skills. Um, having hand skill wise than like first year. First year, you're really getting comfortable with like even being in there using some of the equipment, uh, and learning about different press and stuff like that. So like second year is really putting that into action. Like okay, you can easier look at a prep that you did and know what you did wrong. You can easily look at a two than like being able to diagnose, diagnose certain things. So just getting a lot more comfortable with actual like dental things. Um, I think that was one of the big things of like, or one of the, the big things that kind of stood out about second year and uh, really like hearing professors talk about certain things and it like becoming second knowledge, like things start clicking a lot more for you. But at the same time, you're talking about things that are a lot more complicated and complex. So it's still that learning curve. But I think, I think that was like one of the biggest, the biggest like key factors that stood out to me about second year uh, so far. So developing those hand skills and having a little bit more aptitude and understanding as to what's from from the first year, knowing a little bit now, a little bit more now about about how to do certain things, but still developing those skills, still developing those skills, and you do it a lot yeah, more second those, year uh, repetition. Yeah, yeah, repetition. So I, I, didn't repetition. Know, I was thinking, uh, just wanted to say, like getting into the clinic as well. Getting into the clinic and having to do like clinical assists and spend more time in there and seeing actual procedures that you're learning about in the classroom happen in real life and like really being more hands on, you know, working in that capacity. I think that helped out with the learning curve, uh, learn uh, a bit more as well as just getting used to like clinic, uh, clinical patient interaction. Now at Tufts, as as second years, do you guys have much interaction with the with the D3s to help? with a little bit of some learning curves? How, how does it, how's it set up there? Um, so we have a, a, a VIP uh, vertical integration program. Uh, so basically we have a big, um, we have a third year big and we actually have a fourth year big, I guess. So oh, yeah, every year, every, every year. year. Um, but you know what, I'm, I'm going to be honest and I want all the viewers to, to hear me when I say this, I think that your mentorship within dental school is going to be, primarily um, based on your pursuit of that mentorship. You know, of course, any program is going to put you in a position where you have the contact information for people, um, but it's really up to you to really reach out, um, you know, and seek that knowledge 
because everybody's busy. Everybody got stuff going on, you know, and it, yep. you might yep. not see somebody who is, is used to being in that mentor uh, type of role. And therefore, if you have questions, you need to, you know, step up and say, hey, X, I need to uh, ask you about this. And you will see that you can learn a lot more, not even a lot more, but just a lot in general from these older classmates. Um, and a lot of the time, because they're giving you one-on-one -on -one attention, you might learn a lot more from them than you might necessarily learn throughout a lecture, you know? That's so right. yeah. it's all dependent on you. So make sure you're a go-getter and you uh, definitely form those relationships. That's good. Good, good advice, which kind of leads us into the last uh, set of questions. So for all the D1s that are transitioning into their second year of dental school, what, what, what would you uh, say is um, maybe some, give some advice or some tips uh, for them. Can you both share one or two main things of, of some advice that you would give uh, the, the rising D2s, not, not only at Tufts, but across the country? Um, I guess, yeah, I'll go first. Uh, what I say is don't be discouraged by D2 year and don't be intimidated by D2 year because granted, I mean, yeah, you're going to hear things, you're going to, some things you might, you might have troubles with, whatever, and w whatever, but you know, at the end of the day, like you got through first year and you probably didn't think you would get through that. And a lot of people told you how hard that was going to be. So just put things in perspective, really embrace what the process is, uh, learn as much as you can going through it and, and find what the little, even if it's something small, find something that you can, you can take out of it that makes you feel better about, you know, having to put in all the hours and all of that. You know, granted, you may be looking forward to getting in with the patients, the patient interaction, but Put that in perspective when you're learning about a crown prep and thinking about okay i need to get really good at this crown prep i need to really oh i'm not good at it now but i need to be really good so that i can then do it and have somebody else give somebody else a positive experience when they do come to me when i do eventually get to that that point so granted when you're in it honestly it's like d2 year is probably one of the hardest years but it also went by in like a flash so you know if, if you could think about it in that way i say uh don't be intimidated and definitely, you know, go in and attack it. Attack D2 year because that's the only way you're going to get through it and have a little bit of, you know, uh, self-satisfaction and, and not necessarily want to repair all every day, you know. So expect yeah. it to be hard, but just go in and attack it. Go in and attack it. You'll be fine. Tyler, no reason. what about you, Tyler? So, so I have a, a huge tip that I want everybody to listen to me. <laughs> everybody, please listen to me. Get involved. Now, Granted, classes come first, of course, mm -hmm. always come first, but your experience within dental school will be enriched times three if you get involved with your school. I'm talking mm -hmm. ASDA, I'm Lord talking ADEA, I'm talking global service learning trips. Look, every we pay a lot of money to go to these schools, y'all. So y'all need to take advantage of every opportunity that you have to really just get as much information from the school and these programs as possible. Literally, we talk about mentorship. If by you applying to ASDA and even you, you know, you don't even have to really get a leadership position if you're just being in those meetings, having those conversations with everybody. You'll get to know somebody that you would have never talked to <laughs> regard, like in another situation just because you all are both a part of ASDA. Also, a lot of faculty, they come and they, take part in these different programs as the idea of global service learning trip. They want to see students who are involved. So by you being in that position, they're looking at you. Granted, they're looking at all the students like potential uh, mentees, but if they have a personal connection and they're able to build that with you, your mentorship or mentorship relationship with them will go so much farther than the other person's. And I'm telling you, it is super, super important for you to build these relationships. People want to talk about specializing. <clears throat> people want to talk about doors being open look grades are awesome of course but it's all about who you know i'm telling y'all i'm telling y'all I've, I've lived this i'm telling you <laughs> get involved in school get yeah involved. yeah that's Please. that's key that's and, that's yeah that's a, that's a great tip man that's a great piece of advice and people are going to say well i'm not going to have time to do it second year i don't know i'm not going to be able to do it it's it's too much guys this is some great tips. Look, great uh, tips. Get involved look, because you have time to binge watch the office. Yeah. <laughs> you have time to binge watch your favorite show. 
when you when you feel tired, you have time to relax. Look, Do make it. the time. Make, make the time. time. For the that you want. Make the time. I'm telling you, you will thank yourself later. There you go. There you go. Well, guys, as always, it's always good to to talk to you guys to see you. Uh, I'm so very proud and glad oh, you guys got through this uh, this big hump of, uh, of 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 dental school, getting through that second year. Thanks so much for sharing uh, things that you like the best, your challenges, and how you got through them. And then also this last segment or all the the advice. So uh, for you guys that are listening, I want you to uh, give us some feedback. What did you like about today's video? Put that's the question of the day. Uh, write down in, in these comments right below. Just let us know what you like most about what you heard from uh, future DDS, all right? And what something something that you heard that you didn't maybe think about, or or maybe even consider as it relates to doing uh, and getting prepared for the second year of of dental school. So Terrell and Tyler, thank you so much. Good luck in this upcoming D three year, and of course, uh, we'll be in touch soon. All right. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. Hey guys, and also check out this oh, next yeah. video right here. There's one here, and there's one here with these guys too. Ha ha! So check out these two videos, and we'll see you on the next <laughs> on the next video. All right, thanks, thanks guys.